Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This morning I woke up for another SpaceX Starlink launch to a Falcon 9 making a bit more noise than usual. That is of course rocket speak for I am ready for launch. And the launch pretty much went as according to plan. One difference for this launch was that the initial deployment of the Starlink satellites was to put them into a slightly eccentric orbit, so instead of performing their long 45 minute coast so they could circularize the orbit, they decided to drop the satellites off and then let them do their circularization and orbit raising. So that meant that the webcast was a little bit shorter. But what didn't go according to plan was the booster, which we had all expected to land. It would be the 50th launch of a Falcon 9 booster, which was pretty cool. This was booster number 1056, which had flown three times previously. The last time was on 17th of December 2019, which meant they had turned this booster around in just under nine weeks. During the entry burn, we lost downlink with the booster, and it wasn't recovered. Instead, we cut to the camera on the barge. We hear a call out that the landing legs have deployed. And then on the right side of the barge camera, you see a cloud that's forming. That cloud looked to me like it was uh, you know, consistent with the engines firing. It had that kind of characteristic pulsing look. And there's nothing, no rocket appears. But a few seconds later, there's a splash somewhere which throws water onto the camera lens and then we cut away. It was later confirmed by SpaceX during the live stream that the booster made a soft landing next to the barge, which meant that it then fell over. We also heard a call out for the FTS being uh, disarmed, so they would have depressurized the booster means that they're probably going to be able to tow it back to shore. So that was it. It landed and then it took a few seconds to fall over. And when it did, it created a splash which deposited the water on the camera lens. Now let me be clear right away that this is a successful mission for SpaceX. They deployed all 60 of their Starlink satellites into their target orbits. And the fact that we are talking about a failed booster landing is pretty much a testament to how routine these have become. But the previous booster landing was slightly anomalous. In this case, the booster came down exactly on target. And if you watch carefully, as it gets close, it hovers, cuts its engine and falls hard onto those landing legs. The booster looks fine. The crush cores absorb the force. But clearly the booster slowed down a little too much and found itself having to cut power. I made this image using vertical slices of the landing video going from you know left to right as time goes on and you can see that on the left the booster is coming down and then it plateaus out. The thing about the Falcon 9 booster is the Merlin engine provides too much thrust for it to hover and they can't throttle it low enough. So at that point when its descent speed had stopped it had no option but to cut the power and drop onto the deck. And now it's natural to ask, is this minor navigation error somehow related to today's larger failure? Well, that seems plausible. I mean, we can eliminate a lot of potential problems. It's not the grid fins. We've seen in the case of CRS-16, when the grid fins go, it loses its cross-range capability. This ended up several miles from the site that it was supposed to land at. Uh, granted that this lost control early on, but the grid fins don't help it unless it's still traveling fast. So if the grid fins had failed, it would have been miles away from the barge. The engines clearly lit just fine. In the case of Falcon Heavy, that center core came down going pretty fast. The Falcon Heavy core shows just how close they get to the barge before they even light the engines. But you'll see as the engines light, they get down, the legs deploy, and then they make that traverse maneuver to put themselves on the barge. Also, since it was deploying the landing gear, that would seem reasonable to think that the booster was under control until that point, and then only after that did it make the decision not to land. If you're soft landing in the water, the landing legs aren't very useful. In fact, in the case of CRS-16, I believe they had to remove one of the landing legs to make it possible to tow it. So I don't have any definitive answers. I would love to know more. I suspect that something was out of spec as it deployed the landing gear and it decided not to perform the landing. I'd like to think that we'll find out more. SpaceX do want to sell the fact that they're reusing boosters. They've talked about reusing boosters 10 times. This was the fourth flight and 
I, I guess it's good to see that it did fail to land on the landing rather than fail during the launch. It seems to me that landing is the point where you've just gone through a launch and a very heavy re-entry. Therefore, that's the point where you're most likely to suffer a failure. With the Starlink launches, the boosters are being loaded up to the absolute max and they're traveling about 630 kilometers downrange before they land, which means they come in quite hard and hot and therefore, yeah, it's not surprising that they're experiencing more stresses than normal. But SpaceX is going to have a lot more Starlink launches this year to just figure out how hard they can push these boosters, how many launches they can seriously get out of them so that they can give their commercial customers more confidence that a reused booster or a flight proven booster, as they say, is right for their precious payload. And again, you know, you gotta stress that this is something that would have seemed miraculous a decade ago. This would have been something from science fiction. And the fact that a failure is fascinating to us is really, uh, uh, really a testament to how routine that SpaceX has made booster landings. One more thing, people talked about this little piece of uh, debris that's on the side. I don't think that's anything to worry about. We've seen stuff like that in the past in that exact shape. And the general consensus is that it's ice that's formed. H however, this does seem to be a little rubbery to be ice, so I, I don't know exactly what it is. We've seen them in the past and they haven't caused any problems then. I expect we'll see the booster towed back to shore over the coming days and we might find out more. Uh, as of right now, I don't think SpaceX or Elon have posted about it. Also, we haven't heard anything about the fairing catches, so I presume that those are being fished out of the water right now. I will keep you posted if I find out anything. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.